It's no secret that AI is transforming the workplace. So how do we harness its potential whilst keeping that human element that sets businesses apart from one another? I'm Mike Loder and the Tech Edge starts right now. Hello everyone and welcome back to The Tech Edge, of course presented by the team at AvePoint, where each episode we delve into the latest industry trends for business IT and their significance in today's landscape. Today we are talking all things AI, how, how experts, I should say, are exploring its rapid adoption and what are the implications for business leaders. And joining me now is my co-host, AvePoint Director of Information Management, Alyssa Blackburn. Wonderful to see you again. This is an interesting one. It is, it really is an interesting one and I think we need to think about it in broad terms, um, particularly in an education sense, okay. because we need to think about the next generation of workers who are coming in for whom AI has always been part of their world. So for example, if you ask my 11 year old daughter what this means when you're in a car, for <laughs> example, she's never been in a car that hasn't had electric windows. Um, and so when I did this to her the other day, she had no idea what I was talking about. Now what that tells me is that the nature of our workforce is changing and that starts in our education sector. So I'm super excited to talk to our next guest and get his perspective on what's going well, on Well, let's not mess about. Let's bring in Joe Brazier, Worldwide K-12 Strategy Manager, uh, Manager from the team at Microsoft. It's wonderful to have you on the program. Just how is rapid AI adoption impacting business leaders amidst this great workplace transformation we're seeing? You and the team must be keeping a close eye on all of this. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. And hello again, Alyssa. Um, the rapid adoption is just that people are grabbing everything, trying everything. And what this is doing for business leaders is it's making them have to rethink their strategy, rethink their culture, and really rethink what productivity means in the workplace, in education, in higher education, in everywhere that it is. So they're having to take a different role, having to really look at it differently. And do something a little bit different because AI adoption is not so much about the tool, but the people involved in it. Uh, the leveraging the right tools has to do with the data that you put into it, but also what you're trying to accomplish with it. Mm -hmm. So if what you rely on is managing people's tasks, they can now do it much quicker. They can be more productive. So you need to have more of an outlook on what you're trying to get to, what you're trying to accomplish and you have to give room for growth, for learning, for innovation. So that role of leaders through all of this adoption is that their workers aren't spending time doing TPS reports. They're not spending time on this mundane, uh, the logistics and the operations. They're able to streamline it. They're able to, to make it quicker. They're able to automate it. And they're able to get generative AI to help assist in those uh, mental blocks in order to alleviate the cognitive load and the mental strain. And so what we're finding is that leaders are needing to adapt to that and change the way that they lead and the way that they go about mm. building their strategies and cultures yeah. in their companies. So Joe, we hear a lot about, you know, the rapid adoption of AI. So, you know, there's lots of statist statistics about how, you know, long it took radio to reach 100 million users, how long it took um, television, how long it took Facebook. ChatGPT took three months, for example, to reach 100 million users. So we know that the adoption of this technology has been extreme. What concerns do business leaders or experts have in this space about the pace of AI adoption? Mm. Well, I think you touched on a part of it, Alyssa. That rapid adoption of ChatGPT, of generative AI, that came so quickly is what has people a little bit flustered, a little bit worried about what exactly is going on. And the fact that it's been out for just over a year is mind blowing to many because they're trying to catch up with where it is now, but it's about to have another acceleration. Things are going to continue to grow at this pace for the next year, let's say year or two years. Even if it's a year, then we're not gonna recognize where we are now a year from now. The same way as it seems like when ChatGPT first hit the market in November of 2022, it seemed that seems years away. That seems a pandemic ago, right? But what we're about to touch on is that we're not gonna recognize where we are now in the next couple of years. It's going to continue to accelerate. And so that, con that is concerning as to what does that mean for myself as a leader? What does that mean for myself in the workforce? What does that mean for the kids coming up through school? What does it mean for myself as a higher ed institution? How do I prepare students for something that not only is the jobs don't exist, but the industry may not exist. The mm. opportunities, the, the learning may not exist. How do I prepare them for that? And so those things we used to talk about, those soft skills, 
uh, those 21st century skills are starting to become the required and needed skills to be able to adjust, uh, adapt, and thrive in the era of AI. Yeah. And I liken it a lot to uh, when smartphones really first came out and there was an app for absolutely everything. There was a proliferation of apps and some of them might've just done one thing and others did another thing, but then they started to come together. We started to get a core sense of what we as a society needed apps on a smartphone to do. And I think that's what we're going to see over the next couple of years with artificial intelligence and generative AI. It's going to just be this burst of all these different AIs and GPTs and co-pilots and all these things. And then it's going to start to coalesce into what society needs out of generative AI. And so from a leader standpoint, you're going to need to really be on top of the, the people aspect of it. You're gonna really need to make sure that you're encouraging growth and learning and education, and you're encouraging your employees and your people to build their own literacy in AI. They can't just kind of take what you say for face value. You've gotta be a coach, you've gotta be a guide, and you've gotta give people a chance to really dig in and learn and explore and think through why they need it, right? What are the outcomes they're trying to get? Not just, I've gotta finish this report, uh, because it can do that already. So now yeah, how do yeah. we get to the outcomes we're really trying to get to? And as you said, it sort of goes far beyond just that finishing of reports and doing research and whatnot, and industries may not exist. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing a lot of fear amongst business leaders or excitement at embracing the new technology? I'm curious to know how it's transforming the workplace and of course influencing those business leaders. Um, are they getting worried? Um, it's it's like when you're at the top of a roller coaster like you might have been there before if you've been here for a while you might be your first time on it and your people told you this is going to be exciting but you have a, a sense of excitement and fear that's all mixed in together you've got some trepidation so you want what's the, you want the good parts of it you know there's a chance that the bolt's loose and that you could fly off and die but you're hoping that everything that built that is is coming together that they were all competent and that you are aware of how it was built so that you can have a sense of excitement and enjoyment and that you can get to what's coming on the other side. So I, I think that we're there. I'm not saying that carnival rides are dangerous. I'm just saying there is a no, level no, no. of excitement at the top, but that fear of, oh my gosh, I've never been on this before. Even if you've been on it 17 times earlier because your kid wants to keep going on it, that's the thing. There is a level of excitement and fear and they're trying to to mitigate the fear by putting the guardrails, the guidelines, the, the, the coaching, the policies in place, and also be able to encourage that innovation, encourage that envelope pushing, encourage the things to go out of the box, and all of those other cliches. We wanna make sure that we're pushing the envelope, that we're pushing the cutting edge, but at the same time, we are bringing everybody along with us. So what we wanna make sure doesn't happen is that we don't create more of a divide in that digital access and that digital uh, equity divide. We want to make sure that everybody has a chance to do this. Um, so it, it, it's hard to say, is it fear or is it excitement? It, yeah. you, you can't get yeah. too excited and yeah. leave people behind. You can't be so afraid that you don't push for innovation. We've got to get them both going at the same time. Yeah, I think, Joe, you make some really, really good points there. And I think one of the things that business leaders need to consider in this as well, and this is a topic, of course, Mike, of one of our other episodes, and yeah. that is the how do we implement all of this ethically and responsibly? But we, let's take your roller coaster analogy. We want to be assured that, you know, somebody has checked the bolts, that there is, you know, there's a safety program in place, that things have been done appropriately. So we can can get on that roller coaster and really enjoy that ride. So I think I love your mm -hmm. I love your analogy in in that one as well. Um, it, to to wrap up, do you have kind of one top tip or one thing for business leaders when they're approaching this this rapidly changing um, environment with generative AI? What's the one tip that you've got for them to really got to focus on this thing? Well, my role is in education, so I always think that there is power and there's value in education, educating yourself, building your own skills. And so my my coaching, my encouragement, my next steps that I have for everybody is to go use the tools, go try out the tools, find out how you want to use them, find out how they're beneficial to you, find your questions, come up with your own answers, make your own mistakes and troubleshoot, right? So 
get in there, get your hands dirty, knead the dough, make your own bread, find out what works for you. And uh, we've got ways to help support that. Uh, we've got our frameworks around responsible AI. You can look to, to what Microsoft has, um, but we do encourage research. We do encourage that you get in there, you use the tools, and we're here to help you along the way. Absolutely well said by you, Joe. I want to thank you for joining us on the program, highlighting uh, Microsoft's involvement of all of this, and of course, letting us pick your brain about the future of the workplace uh, with AI in mind. All right, thank you. Interesting times. That's a fast roller coaster, I tell it you what. It is a fast roller coaster. As, as somebody who's not a massive fan, I, oh, get, you and me both. Oh, I get a little bit seasick my if hands I walk are too quickly. So the whole <laughs> idea of a roller coaster is not my thing, but I think Joe's analogy there is perfect for describing yeah. the environment in which we find ourselves now. Things to keep an eye on and uh, you know keep upskilling and learning. That's uh, kind of what I took away from that. But Absolutely. Alyssa, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you as always. And of course, all of you, thank you for joining us on the program here. Head to tickernews.co for more. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Never stop learning. Be well. You're watching Ticker. We'll have more in just a few minutes.